All right, well, uh, happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope everyone's having a midway through our holiday season. Goofy. Um, so tonight we're looking at Kagakuri. We looked at this last time I was here. I'm going to kind of go keep going down into them. We've got a couple other copies uh, tonight that I've never shown. Um, so that will be fun and interesting. And tonight, the Kamai of the night is the Toko Boyoshi. All right. Does anybody know what that one is? Correct. It's an Ishimonji. So let's, um, you know what, let's, why don't you guys do some rolls first? Yeah, get some rolls in, loosen you up. You're going to be going down the ground a lot tonight. So let's uh, let's get that body primed and ready to roll. All right, so Takakuri, which is the Hidden Clubs School, Hidden Horse. Ah, sorry, so close. One idiot was the two hidden schools. The Hidden Door School, the first new post school. Um, depending on where you look and what you need, it either grew up from, you know, kind of, uh, from some instances actually say no, it actually started as slow ninja just back in the Eagan Mountains, back in the late 1100s, which, which if you go with that story, would be one of the oldest of the ninjas. All right. Um, you know, just to be, you know, from what I've said, I haven't found anything, you know, um, telling you that this was this one or this one. So it's kind of different, different stories. Um, typically, we, I don't teach a lot of chakra you kata, just because most of this actually I guess the sword. You know, even like the beginner stuff is actually, you know, unarmed against the sword. But there are a couple, I showed a couple the other week, um, and, you know, show a couple more tonight that are actually unarmed, but you can see these actually could also be used against the sword. All right, so we'll get to that in a second. The first thing we're going to do with the book tonight is that the come out of the night, because we all know the come out now, right? We got them all? We have all ten. I think there's one I haven't talked about yet. Oh, yes. Basically, everything else that's not incorporated in the other 15 ways to hit, basically a body slam. Or any other piece of your body to hit with. You hit with your arm, boom, that would be timing. You know, hitting with it, they're bumping somebody in the back, you know, checking them off the cliff. Timing. All right, anything, you know, twerking, whatever you want to call it, it works. Um, but please don't twerk anybody down tonight, I swear. Get out of class. <laughs> On that. Um, actually, you were saying we were talking about like all the different dance moves that we make into. Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um, tonight we're going to look at Tatoku Yoshi, which is basically Ishimoji down on one knee. All right. And so, Matt, we're going to we we'll look at some stuff that you guys are pretty familiar with. Uh, right punch coming up, grabbing the hand. And instead of going and taking him down this way, and, like there's a multi that we see all the time, this is going to come in here. I'm going to take you just going. All right. Great one to know because it changes the levels. It can be used on legs, arms, feet, throws, whole nine yards. All right. Make sense? You all see what we're doing? Yeah. Start there. To kind of jump in for just a moment on this, there's, there's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, right now, Right now, uh, what we're looking at is we're looking at this rotation kind of happening in a tighter space with a drop down to the right knee. Kind of looks almost like that, yeah? But we're shutting this thing down in a fairly vertical direction. I'd call that a bit earthier of a, of a thing. Maybe a little wind, but kind of earth. There's also ooh, kind of this windier version where we're dropping down to the left knee. So you, you, could, you could have this be functioning more as a wind, you could be having this function as a bit more broad. Uh, Mr. White, if, I, if I'm correct, you are working this right now as sort of a rock to the right knee, a bit earthier of a Yes, situation. more straight down. More, more straight down. down. It doesn't mean so, you have to do that, but I find with the outside side going, you're pulling them too much, as opposed to really just changing that level and dumping them. Yeah, okay. So, so just just to clarify that, because I, I, I was looking around, I was walking around thinking, ah, the wind here variant. Where it's a bit more of a wind. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you totally absolutely can do that. You hear, I'm going to go, instead of this game, I'm going to go drive and pull him along. I can, but I've got to make sure I have the mass. Like Lynn was trying to do because that and having a hell of a time. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to have the mass like a bit torque. And it doesn't mean that I could go this way and then go down on this knee over here. But in that example, what I was doing is just dropping directly to really take it from a 
So the fact that this works isn't because I'm I'm doing not this isn't because I'm on the wrist. I just happen to be on the wrist. It's the fact that her arm went from 30 pounds, about 210 pounds a second, with velocity going downward. I mean, imagine that you're holding on your arm and instantly it gained 200 pounds. What would it do? It would throw off your absolute equilibrium. Right? It's like all of a sudden, like you're driving a car, and all of a sudden that car just got you know five times heavier on one side, you peel off to the side. You wouldn't be able to control that. So it's not the fact that I'm doing it in a multi, I'm getting out of position, I can do it from here. Okay? It's the fact that all of a sudden my disappearing is adding so much weight to her body, she just, just can't adjust fast enough. So the more that you kind of Instead of going straight down, you take it out and around, you're dissipating that. Right? You're having this be a um, smoother landing with that pull, which can work. I need to have more emphasis on the hand, though, for that. I'm looking at this as just getting it here. All right, just boom. Just add that weight right to the side of that body. Boom. It'll be very hard to do. Okay? Good. This is going to be a this version is going to be a little tougher, <laughs> but it's the same premise. So we're here. Imagine going from a sofa guy. Actually, just do a couple of sofa guys. To find some sofa guys. All right, just warm up for that. But once you need to have the feeling of going into a sofa guy, to pull off what I'm going to show you. So do that for a couple of seconds. Enough to All start right. with. <laughs> We're going to do that same thing, right? I'm going to turn and go this way, right? I, I, right? That's the first step. As I start to do that, what kind of do you So don't take the step. Pretend. Pretend like you're taking the step. Shift your body weight like you're going to take the step. Right? It'd be very hard to go down to the Soto Yoshi and fall my weight on this knee. I hurt my knee. I have to get my foot out of the way. So I'm going to lean, shift my weight forward like I was going into it. So my, this leg's free. And just get out of the way. Okay? So that's the key. You need to shift your weight like you're going this way. All right? You won't be able to do it from here. This will be very hard. You'll be pulling them on top of you. Shift your weight like you're putting your weight over here. So they're starting to go. And just get out of the way. It's quick, isn't it? It's awesome. And it gives you the angle for them to fall down here. Okay? Go slow for a couple of times. All right. But again, the ability to change levels. Go ahead. I'm starting to see this uh, float around a little bit. Can I borrow you, please? So, uh, so we have this. Uh, we want to be mindful of, the, of where we're falling. Uh, so I'm seeing folks getting through this part really well, which is good. That's the easiest part. Uh, if I am dropping back, where is she going? On top, of you. On top of me. Yeah, and that's not where we want to go. So make sure that we're consistent with the direction we kind of already chosen as we enter into this. He, notice he's not he's not going anywhere other than down. He's only going down. So do that again. Watch, watch where he is in time and space. Just where he starts to. He shift, 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 shift. Down. Yeah. He's not going back out forth. He's just going down. There was maybe a two inch scoop for it. I, I just think maybe just to clear space for my knee. Yeah. But uh, other note, um, this anchoring, whether she's grabbing me really hard or I'm grabbing her real hard, it's important to have that anchor. If things are loosey goosey in here, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna look like crap. So keep it, keep it tight. Ooh, here we are. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then you're just starting to pound, pound flesh. All right? Cool, have fun, thank you. And I did turn the heat down. It's warm, it's getting warm in here. Yes. Okay. The reason this is hard, or then just the wrist off, is there's a natural tendency in a sofa gake to go like this. And to let the arms collapse as you try to get behind them because you think it's easier. In doing that, 
even if in letting that collapse happen, this would be very tough for me right now. Because he's not even close to, he's perfectly situated. So when you shift, I'm not, I'm not collapsing my arms. My arms are staying right where they are. Okay? So if you're having trouble, it's probably because in that shift, you're doing this. Alright? Shift and have the whole thing just stay together. Then you can go. Okay? That's everybody I've seen who's done it wrong it's because their arms aren't having the effect. Keep those on there and just. It, it's a fixed position. It's a, yeah, it's a fixed position. Yeah, that's why I said just, just shift your weight. I didn't say shift your weight and let your arms go. Shift your just just do that. May I may I offer Absolutely. just a just a uh, just a quick just a second alternative uh, so you have it. We can certainly do this from this position as well. Mm. Say, same idea. I'm not pulling him to me. He's actually kind of already pulled to me. So we have our fixed position. Now when I drop, nothing's changed. Nothing's pulled. Nothing's pushed. Just now we're dropping and he's coming with us. So if you want to try this from a bit of an overhook or a bit of a grab around the arms to kind of get that feeling of this thing doesn't have to move, go ahead and try that and then go back to how you were with it. So just a quick thing to try. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I do. Questions, thoughts on this? You can do this with any, any technique that we use. Don't even have to be a heck of a one to use with this. Um, we can do this with a Yoko Ruki. So same same premise. Down here, and I go into Yoko Ruki. And then we'll have Yoko Ruki. And flip them that way. I sort of copy you like, I don't need to do it right there. I can go here, shift my weight, but then step back here and it's okay to get between his legs. Right? And start start you know, crushing them one. Um, we do have last Saturday. So the other thing that Sophie Yoshi has too is it has this. The knee pass that comes into play at time. You use the trip, you use to take the knee down and pull on the rest. Okay? Make sense? Questions, thoughts on this one? Okay, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna actually go look at um, one of the kata who took out for you. Now, these um, these kata are there are a lot of kata. Is there a starting point? kind of learn from. Some more in some of the different lineages have more little secrets and little tidbits that they kind of give you as you go along. Um, and some are just like, oh no, this is really, really important. I don't remember to go, uh, to you, the first one looked at and where we had to move forward and get that alignment. You know, that was a really major thing. You know, that and then it shift back. We look at the Renyo and Yoko Ru, there's like 18 different things. All right. But to, the Takaka you stuff is usually, there's a couple little things in there and some major points in there. This one, Kagayashi, um, and again, a lot of these are done again like they're, like they're unarmed against sword. All right, so there's a lot of you saw it there where he like he reach out and I extend him out like this. Your arm is just weird, but there. All right, same concept. I'm drawing her. He's gonna come up with a left lunging grab. Whoa! All right. As he comes with that left lunging grab. That's the kata, right? But the principle is like you're moving out of the way and you're using kind of a shocking off oh, thing. Top of kind of, right here. You kind of make you do that. Leave that arm out for a second. So then I can come up here and perform kind of process with the top like this. Okay? Now, what I don't want people to do is just take a from here. Don't take this and just reform this arm. This, this arm is in a very tough position right now. All right, I'm going to pick up that arm, roll it, step in front of them, and just execute now. That's all I want you to do right now. All right, and I want you to get any flat in that because that arm is in a really precarious position. If you really put all your weight on it, you will break it. Okay, so we're going to be very super careful. Here we go. Actually, we're off. <coughs> yeah, come on, just step aside. That's it. Alright, there's just a to make you feel that. Here, second. Can we point out a detail? Uh, can, it, it, can we set up front through the first movement there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So here we have. Oh, two more times. Just here. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, pay attention to how.
how Mr. White is moving his body to acquire the arm. And it's not just his shoulder. There's a shift. Everything's moving all together all at once. We don't want to violate our come eye rules and have our shoulders start moving separate from your body, which will be a temptation, and I bet you're going to move. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. try not to. No, Mr. LeVay's right. I'm really not. Take, I'm taking a little slide up here and shifting my weight to be able to get this shot. But I don't want to get too far away from this arm, because if I get too far away, it means i got to come all the way back in. So I just want to get offline. So now I shift back to capture. Change my angle. Think about next to kick in the head. <laughs> okay. All right. Can we see it? Be very careful. All right. There's actually less moving parts here than you think. Um, if you're a lady and you don't want to keep getting smacked in the chest, um, actually, to the ladies together on this one, um, hit, hit, hit each other somewhere else. All right. Go ahead. All right. Mate. Um, I'm just going to do it real slow. Hi, can I borrow your slippers a moment? So uh, that left hand's come in. Wait, uh, left, left, uh, left grab. So, so we've come in and we've hit. One of the things I'm seeing is I'm seeing folks shifting back. Their arm now wants to roll over and they're still shifting back. Your arm is moving in the opposite direction of your body here. What if we shifted back and as this rolled over, we took that space back? The arm motion is following our body this way. Now, now I don't have to supply force through here. I just have to maintain my position well. We can then step in front or step through and clear the lane, either way is fine. But, uh, but as, as we bring this back, goes with our body, goes with our body, now we're entering. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Please pay attention to that detail. I know. So just so we're clear, on this, on this, um, this classical version of Rinsaki and Nagi, typically we don't look at it like this. Um, there's not a pressure down. All right. You may find yourself just because of the way you get it that it looks like it's pressure. It's really actually not. So as Matt comes in with that, I'm actually pushing up with this. This is going up. All right. I'm not pushing him down. If I push him down, he's going to be very hard to trip. We're going to have to like really be fun. So I'm actually pushing this up, which is actually getting more on his toes, and then I can go. He's going down, I'm going up. I think what a lot of people are seeing is you're doing this, and they're thinking about I'm not doing that. All right, he's going down because I'm reaching up and his arm is rolling. That's what's happening. I'm heading up. Okay. That's what's making him look like he's going. So please don't push the arm down. Put your hand up and let it roll. All right, it will look like they're going down the way. Okay, good. All right. All right, here we go again, Mate. Uh, so, so to, to further clarify, uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, spirit fingers, guys. Show me jazz hands, would you? Uh, what come eye is this? So, from here, maintain your come eye. If you're breaking down your kamai, if you're breaking down your kamai, you're probably kind of losing the essence of what you're trying to do. Keep this kamai together. All right, make this, make this clear and consistent what you're doing. Remember, this is classical work. You can play classical music here. It just also happens to have spirit fingers. So if, 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 if everything is going badly, just please do high up spirit fingers for me and let Chaz do the work for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah. Mate, congratulations. You've been rewarded with more notes. <laughs> so, uh, right over here. So, so we're getting to this point here. Oh, oh no, we'll start with the grab. Uh, so left grab, left grab. So we're stepping up. Here we go. Uh, we're getting to this point. One thing that I'm noticing is I'm noticing people making a common gan sekinagi mistake, which is they're drifting back, entering into the shoulder a lot, and, uh, and then trying to do this rope from here. Uh, where do you think, what do you think you might want to do from here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fair. Right. I'll say, go ahead and headlock me and start punching me. <laughs> I, I, we're, we're kind of in now because it's really nasty yeah. struggle, yeah. and we're going to have to like, find a way to deal with this. We don't want to have to do that. So as far as your targeting on the arm is concerned, let's roll through the elbow slash just above the elbow. This is like, you ever, you ever try to roll one log over another? 
You could do it on one end of a log and it will roll the whole piece over. Right, we're over here. Everyone here is like, no, I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I'm a swamp person doesn't mean you can't make the, uh, anyway. Uh, Roll from here, from this place, please. Not from up here. You're just running into a lot of meat and a lot of man in there. Don't do that. Yeah. Alright, have fun. So we've gone down a rabbit hole. The reason we don't you know, show this one a lot, it's actually a tough throw. Alright, getting someone like that is actually very, it's very hard. And we can spend weeks on just being able to do a Gensake Nage, just one arm, one side of Gensake Nage. That wasn't the point, though. The point was... This, as this is coming up, I'm, I'm gauging distance here. Remember, I see a lot of people as you get, as you get more used to, you're starting like here. And you're like, okay. Hey, just, give me to the throw. Give me to the throw. Well, no, the point of this is like, I'm at a distance. He's reaching out. Right? He's, he's reaching out. As he reaches out, boom, I stop him for a second. Whoa, and then I can get in there. So that's really the kind of point to this. Isn't really the throw. The throw is in 80 million different katas, and the throw itself is hard. But can we imagine now taking this somewhere else? He comes in with maybe a right lunge. Whoa. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay. And we can do something from there. You know, this idea of having them extend and give them a shot that they didn't know was coming. That makes it. Oh. You know, they arrive and they realize that they, they, they walked and Mr. Barber said, hit the side of the coffee table, he hit a lance, he didn't realize it was there. Right? That's more the point. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so let's um, work that aspect. Let's actually do really what we just did. So instead of going dust, I'm going to switch the hands. I'm actually going to move the inside, I'm actually going to throw this bush straight, boom, right in here. Now, this is a little different response. He's still leaning forward, this is up here. I'm going to cap, come up, capture, get this hand, and right that Stoku Yoshi we were looking at earlier. Okay? I got a little bit more nifty with the hand work, but I'm kind of using the same capture as before. Oh! Shifting back, rolling. <laughs> okay, you see it? Okay, so I want the distance. You know, yeah, what do you want me to do? Okay, cool. So Kyle's, now, now I'm not starting here. This isn't it. This isn't it. I'm, yeah, I, yeah, this is her. This is it. Whoa, I don't want him to have to reach. He's going to have to get me. Right. That's the point. That's why, if he's coming out in that long position, like, okay, that's why this affects him. Right? If he's covering me from here, this doesn't affect him as much. It's not as comfortable. He can recover. He's reaching long. Oh, yeah. That, right. Oh, I didn't expect to get there. You're already overreached. Now you hit that. You get sh shut down for a second. Shifting back. Okay. All right. Good. So uh, let's all come a little closer. And let's get closer to the camera. It's the holidays, people. It's the holiday season. So ooh, here we are. One of the things that's happening is people are kind of leaving this hand on top, which you can still do a variant of this like this. It's just going to be, it's going to be a little different. Let's take an easier path. This hand is going to scoop over the top. As that happens, my shoulder rotates forward. Does everyone see that? Where is it bringing his hand? To my other hand. This is sort of that nifty hand work that Mr. White was talking about in terms of gathering that emote. Now we're doing that. As we move, you feel how that had a little bit of downward pressure to it as well. Uh, so try reaching up the top. If uh, if instead we're kind of locking in here, oh, we'll extend a little bit. If we're kind of locking in here, we can still do this. Get this tight to you so that when you move, it moves. You can still get a takedown here, but I have a feeling you're probably have a bit of a harder time with that versus scooping over the top and getting the wrist. I, I find that that's a little bit easier. Does that make sense, everybody? Does anybody need to feel that or do you need to see that? Okay. Oh, Mate. So I've shown this to a couple of you, but I actually think it might be helpful to, to come over here. So please come on close. I'm going to try to keep this in view of the camera. 
I mentioned the, I mentioned the, the log rolling analogy, and I saw some people's eyes just go, oh my god, what's he talking about logs? Oh, you don't know that analogy? That's a great analogy. Yeah, come on, come on in, guys. It's, not, it's okay, as long as you're not playing with hammers. Right? So, let's say, let's, yeah. Do you guys like chairs and houses? Uh, the, uh, so, if I have two logs next to each other, and my challenge is to move this log over here, trying to pick it up in the middle and move it over is really friggin' hard to do. Okay? So, Jesus, yeah, that's, that's the part for you. It's really freaking hot, buddy. So, <laughs> what's easier is keeping that in, in close parallel, putting one side over, and leaving. That, it, it, that's what this is. So, let's talk about a couple examples with, with, in terms of placement. One thing I've noticed is I've seen people like step in this way. And if you look at the angle of our arm, just go ahead and straighten your arm. I'll straighten my arm. You can see where we're almost perpendicular. What that means from this perpendicular, uh, from this almost perpendicularity, is I have to cover all of this ground back this way before I even start kicking. That's a long time in fighting, in fighting with time. That's effectively starting with your logs this far apart and then having to move this one all the way over to get it to the right position and do the and do the That's that's harder to do, and I probably blocked to do that on the camera. Uh, instead, one of the things Mr. White was doing with this was he was keeping this relatively parallel. Now all this effect is we're already starting to have a little bit of, a, of uh, input on what's going on in our partner's body here. This is all more accessible and easier to get into. So I wanted to bring up as an example to talk about uh, the left comes in. We're, we're pretty parallel. If, if I have done this, and I'm having to come here, I'm almost perpendicular, right? Now there's all this recovery time to get to where I need to go, and we don't want that. Nah, brother, just move the log by. Okay, let's go. We've got to get the hand clock by noon. So, so here we go. Makes it a lot easier to roll. Yeah? Good. All right. No, good. Nice point, Mr. Lillard. Very nice. Yeah. Now go forth and lumberjack. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we'll, we'll actually save the other concept to, to Saturday. Um, uh, so same concept. He's going to come in. I'm going to, oh, you know, kind of get him here. And instead of coming up with the sign, we're I can change my footing and make it even easier. Come on, like easy more. Oh! Take off my neck. Make sure there's no more white heads in this world. All right. So he has a brother, you know. Ah. <laughs> okay. So I'm doing a couple things. I'm getting out of the way. Hitting. All right. Getting that shot in. No, I'm kind of positioning my foot already. I'm gonna rock forward to get here. All right, and honestly, just go here to start. I don't wanna see anybody going aggressively into this. You will mess somebody's day up. All right, get to here. If you can get to here, the rest of the technique will be easy. All right, so one, oh, ah. Right there. Fully weight on this one, there's some. Don't go further than that right now. I wanna see how you do with that. Okay? Don't go hard, just go good. Title of the 17th. So, you, so remember, this is long, this is wide. All right, so if I can have you, Adam. Adam's like, I, he's reaching down this line to try to grab me. Yeah, come on. What? Really, really reaching down that line, all right? If I go off on your standard 45-ish thing, there's no way I'm getting out. I just don't have the right angle. I actually don't even have a good shot in the ribs, do I? It really didn't do much because it was, the energy of this was going this way and the energy of him was coming this way, it's more of a glancing shot. I want this to stop him, right? Just like this shot was perpendicular to him, right, it wasn't this way, it wasn't this way, it was boom, straight in. This one has to be straight in. So I'm barely moving up a line, like, 15 degrees. So now I shift in. Oh, I can shift in and adjust back on that line that hyperextends his leg. So we're keeping this shallow. All right, and this is kind of one of the other tricks of this thing here. Is it's not this, you know, here perfectly out. That, that doesn't work. I have to go into something else. I am using my weight shift and angling to get here. Right? Shifting my weight off to the side. 
He could have hit me if I stayed dead. All right, but because I'm here, I get to get him. Just, just, just the narrow sliver of my hook. But I was like, oh, oh, my goodness. And it's because I'm very close to his attack line that I can get that leg that way. If I was any other angle, it would be very tough. I'd have to go into a different part of the leg that you were seeing. But I'm only like 10 degrees off your attack line. Does that make sense? If you need a number tied to it, if the line of attack is zero degrees, you're moving about 90 degrees to the outside of that line. Since you're rotating, because you're putting some inches, you only need to move, what, six, seven inches? Not very far. Yeah. yeah. It, not very far. Yeah. Uh, if, how about this? If, if Adam's attacking me on this line, I'm in the middle of said line. Yeah, he comes and gets me. Shoot. All right, boom. Acknowledge that works. Well, Adam's attacking down the line, so I'm going to put myself on one side of the line. Fully on one side of the line. Now I can go. Okay? Just do that. Get your body, because he's set you right here. Over there. Okay? Well, we'll also help you too if you have some. Most of you guys are pretty well sized with each other. You have a little bit of a height differential against these guys. Um, if you find a man, their, their, their leg is really long. Um, you can aim forward on the line a little bit or sink into it. So you come here with action. <laughs> Whoa! Boom, you go in there. Okay, but yeah, just put your whole self on this side of the line. That's it. Okay? Okay, go. Happy holidays, time for pain. Uh, so, uh, my apologies first. I'll take a volunteer. This sucks a bit. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to do the same move to the side, and we're going to use Hapo Ken's the bicep. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. So, same idea that attack's coming in and just, come, just coming in, slapping that, and just grabbing a hold of whatever flesh you can. <laughs> okay? From there, let's just move and drop into the physical position. Okay? Uh, this is not injury, which is nice. We're not hurt. We're, we're, well, we're hurting them. But we're not injuring them. Very slow and gentle. We won't we don't just whack. And just dropping the weight to the ground. Have fun with that. Uh, bear in mind, I was going to say you're over there, so like, yeah, that sucks. Um, do this hard maybe a couple of times. Give, give it a little bit of zip, a little bit of zip to the zap there, so that we get the idea of how that actually feels, because it's like a short-circuiting moment. Uh, and then from there, it's just grabbing. We're kind of in this almost H1, you know, come on a little bit. And there we go. Okay. Does anybody need to feel that? <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, what time it? Um, that was pretty much there. Um, unless there's questions, thoughts. So I was going to go over two tonight, but um, you know, we got over one because I think there was some there was some good stuff in there. You know, in terms of just you know, just alignment, because this isn't your standard, you know, getting off on a 90 degree angle. This is, oh, just getting out of the way. Like I said, this is a lot of modified stuff from the sword. You're not gonna have time. If someone's coming down with you a sword card, you're not gonna have time to get a 90 degree angle. And you actually may not want it. You know, because that means there's still a lot of space and they can cut you. You kind of want that close. Like, oh, I want to be right here on their hand to keep it tight. You know, either I want to be really close or really far away. I really don't want middle distance. That's not the best place for me. And then this idea of, you know, kind of making them overreach and giving them something that kind of, you know, shocks them into position for a second. So you can actually, oh, that's in this topic for me, I appreciate it. Questions about the Totoko Yoshi? We'll look at that more. Because this all, anything that we do or done, you know, you guys have seen, um, we can incorporate this into. A lot like Yoko Ruki. Anything that we've done, we can incorporate Yoko Ruki. By inversely, you could do Yoko Ruki and Toko Yoshi all together, which now obviously gives us different angles and different levels to actually play with. So we'll play with that more in a second. Thoughts, questions, concerns? All right, how's your arm? That was very nice. Oh, that's a merry late Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like an advent calendar. He's got to peel it back, full chop. All right. Thanks for it, guys. See you next Fake you out.